Hello dear viewers, my name is Nino and you're watching Nino's product reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the FI 9926P. The 9926P is actually an upgraded version of the 9826P, which makes sense when you think about the name. And the difference between these two cameras, while one has slightly faster hardware altogether, is that this one is a full 1080p HD camera, while the other one did not support the quite complete full HD experience. As we unbox the camera, we're going to notice that in this case I have the white version of it, and inside the box you're also going to get a flimsy LAN cable or an Ethernet cable, some kind of mount, a few screws, and the AC adapter as well as the battery for the Wi-Fi. Now I like to use this cheaper cable that is provided only to initially set up the Wi-Fi of the camera and then I usually connect over Wi-Fi. The cable will work for that and you can use it for anything really but the quality of it just doesn't feel right to me so I like to use my you know brand cable something that's a bit better than what we have here. I've taken the liberty of putting the camera right next to an R4M. This is one of the newer models and it has the special AI detection software on it. This camera that we see on the right and that we're reviewing right now does not have it but you can see it's significantly larger than the R4M. When we go into the features we're quickly going to notice that the browser view of the camera and I often get questions about this browser view. The browser view is accessed by simply entering the camera's IP into your browser and you'll see that this browser view works and really doesn't require any special plugins. There was a time when Chrome and other stuff didn't just simply support it but these models of the cameras now the newer ones that came out are again supported by everything and you have very standard features here you have your streams the different streams can be set up depending on your connection speed the camera provides several ones you have your hertz and the outdoor mode WDR is effectively an HDR mode for these cameras with the difference that I'm personally not that big of a fan of it I like the more natural looking color so I like to turn that one off you have the NAA and NAA is a function that effectively adjusts the stream quality depending on the speed of the connection but that creates somewhat um, unstable pictures in the sense that you might be seeing it very clearly and then it might get a bit pixelated I'd rather have a bit of lag when I'm checking the video out if I'm not at home but be able to see it clearly of course we have a mirror feature this feature really is only useful if you intentionally want it to look like this or if you for example are reflecting a camera from a mirror so you would want to correct that because the mirror itself would do that we have a flip feature the flip feature effectively is used if you hang the camera upside down so that you don't see what you're seeing right now because my camera of course is right side up moving on you're also going to notice that we have the different zoom features and focus features and this is one of the big things about this camera and why it is still my favorite camera from Foscam the fact that we have optical zoom here unlike other cameras where we have software zoom we actually have optical one here which means much better quality now in this particular case you will notice that uh, I will play a little bit with the focus as well and I will defocus it you don't need to do that I'm just demonstrating it here and by doing so I'm messing it up a bit as you can see the camera will automatically focus whenever you zoom in and zoom out but you can adjust if you want to or as I did here overdo it and then mess around with it for a while but that's okay the important thing is that in this situation you could just zoom in or zoom out whatever you feel like this is generally an indoor camera it does not have any water resistance so if you leave it outside it's going to break but it does have an outdoor mode and you could for example make it look outside through a window without actually exposing it to the elements and that would work pretty well the zoom feature also lets you go in really close for these situations where for example you want to guard some place that is slightly further away and you want to be able to recognize the faces this is something this camera will generally do very well naturally it is a pan and tilt camera so it will move in all kinds of directions you can control that through your phone or obviously as I'm doing here through the PC interface which is much better in my opinion sometimes I get asked if you need special software to access this or if there's something that I am using no this is literally the interface that you get with the camera so all you have to do again is enter the IP address in your browser and you're gonna be asked obviously for your login credentials and as soon as that is done you can see what I'm seeing right here and you're going to have the absolutely same interface with all the functions moving on you have your IR LED lights which can be used in a manual mode where you set it up 
or it can be used in an automatic mode. Now I like to go automatic simply because the camera does a good job at recognizing what is necessary and what is not and it really does not require you to mess with it but you can if you want to so that's a thing that you can do. Naturally you can also adjust the different colors and yet again I choose not to do that simply because it's already adjusted when it came. Moving on we have the advanced settings inside the camera application and here you will notice that basically we have device status, device information and so on and so forth. These are very useful uh, infos but some of them I cannot show you simply because that would pose a security risk for my camera putting such sensitive data on the internet but what I'm showing you here has no is not dangerous for me so I can go this deep but generally most of it is stuff that you wouldn't really be able to understand because it is extremely technical not to berate anyone or be uh, derogative but the idea is that it's just very raw information you do have a lot of settings though you can set up your email you can set up FTP and you can also set up things that will enable you to connect to this camera remotely from outside of your home network even if you decide not to use the Foscam cloud feature now when we move to the video settings you will see that you have two different stream types this is important because you can switch them on the fly so I set up one that is very high quality and one that is relatively low quality at 720p with less frame rate this enables me to switch between a stream that gives me very high quality recordings but for that demands a faster internet connection or if I'm for example somewhere where the internet isn't that good I can switch to a lower quality and still see what's going on the on-screen settings we've seen just now they just tell you things like if you want to see the camera name and the time the snapshot settings effectively tell you that you can turn on the camera as a as a photo camera as well so while it is recording videos it can also take snapshots very useful if you want to use it with your phone so that you get email notifications with a few pictures and you know exactly what's happening and it's not just for example your dog passing by now when we go to the detection settings and these are where it's really at you will see that I have enabled the detection at all times. The reason for that is that the camera will overwrite everything on the SD card so when you record on SD card it will record whatever you know you have space for in my case that's uh, about a week and then next week is just gonna start overriding the previous week so you don't have to do anything just let it record all the time you can set camera sound where the camera will scream you can set PC sound. PC sound only works while the application that you're looking at right now is open on your browser. That means that it, it is useless unless you have it open. But it is a good thing you can do by turning off your monitor, for example, because you can have your speaker set up to relatively loud and they can scare someone if they try to go in. This this thing can really be loud. So it's a, it's a useful feature. It has its uses. Take snapshot is obviously a thing you can do and the interval after which it will take it. And of course, recording. Push messages to the phone only work if you actually have the application for the phone installed on it. I have it and obviously you should too because it is very convenient and it's something that will help you use the camera a bit more efficiently. Now when it comes to sound detection, this camera does have a microphone. It features two-way audio but to be quite honest with you, I don't like the sound detection simply because it doesn't work quite well. It is designed so that, for example, if someone breaks a window, it's going to trigger from the loud bang. But it will trigger from all kinds of other things. If you have a dog, your dog could bark and trigger it. So that's something that I just don't need. I like the video detection. That's good enough for me. Storage location here, we have SD card selected, but you can also go to FTP server if you can set up one. You have local area recording, which effectively allows you to select a folder on your PC and it's going to also place files there. But again, these recordings will only be made if your application, that one that you're looking at, is open. Now, pre-record is extremely important. What it does is it forces the camera to first record in its own memory a small clip of five seconds in this case. And this clip will be over and over and over recorded. What happens is as soon as we have an alarm trigger, the alarm will record the video after it started and attach the last five seconds to it. Meaning if someone goes inside your house and you check it out, you're going to see how it was five seconds before. So even before the door was open, you're going to see that. And then you see the door opening, the person coming in. So that gives you a little bit of more space. I like it. I think it's very useful. And that is why I have left it on very good feature you can set up how long the that alarm is but I just leave it to default 
Moving on to the local alarm recording, we have already said that this is effectively when the camera saves stuff on our PC and you can separately decide how long these videos are. In my case, they're just 30 seconds. But keep in mind that if a person's walking around, the camera will start recording another 30 seconds clip. So it is effectively just the length of the clips you want to have as files. You don't have to make this very long. You don't have to be worried. You'll just see 30 seconds and that's it. No, if a person is walking around right after 30 seconds, it's going to record again. Now, scheduled recording is another feature you can use and it allows you to set up how and when the camera starts recording and when it doesn't. Now, this could be useful, for example, if you have a store or some place where you're at during the day and you do not want it to record then and for example you want it to be recorded after you're gone so you can set it up after hours and it's going to record only at that time and of course the SD card manager you are being informed here that the SD card manager is only effective when access to a LAN that's not necessarily true you can use it like this too but it is slow and you know viewing the videos like this is harder so if you do it um, over LAN it's going to be much faster that's really all there is all about pan and tilt, speed, focus, zoom in, that's all stuff that is pretty self-explanatory and it's about basically how fast the camera should move when you when you make it turn left and right etc. There are cruise settings which will make the camera constantly move for example just constantly go left, right, left, right or up down and cover a larger area. Now while that feature is quite useful I don't recommend using it because these are mechanical parts and if you make them move all the time, you're shortening the camera's lifespan because as all other things, if you make something, you know, if you make something non-stop work, it's, it's going to break sooner. So I just prefer not to use it. And other than that, that's pretty much it. I'm going to show you now a recording during the night. It's a darker recording. Now, it, uh, it looks pretty bright. The only thing in that room currently in this recording that is illuminating it and it's very little really is my monitor and you can see that it's, everything's very clear very very easy to recognize so that's something that I really value the camera does very well in when it comes to recording at night it has very strong uh, IR LEDs so that's something that will be very useful it is designed for the inside like I said but with such a strong feature like that you could you, you could also point it outside although you would have a problem if it's in front of a window because the window reflects a bit of the light. You're going to have to see how you do it if you do, if you go for that. But while inside, the camera really performs excellently. That's pretty much it. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you'll check out my other videos.